What are the three most globally distinguished budgeting methods? How do these methods work? And how can they aid you in achieving financial success? Let's get budgeting. Hey, it's Matt Hoff here. I've decided to start with something a little different. The comments of the week is, drum roll please. <laughs> Thanks for those kind words, Mr. Kronobalt. Appreciate the support, brother. And don't forget to drop a comment down below. You might just be the lucky winner next week. In this video, we will be diving in to the three most globally distinguished budgeting methods, as well as how they work. First on the list, we will be having a look at the 50 30 20 principle. Second, we'll take a look at the envelope method. Last but certainly not least, you'll have to stick around to see what my favorite budgeting method is. What is the 50-30-20% principle? Well, this rule was first coined by the Harvard bankruptcy expert, Senator Elizabeth Warren. It simply entails allocating 50% of your after-tax income towards your needs, allocating 30% towards wants, and allocating 20% towards savings. This method is a big favorite in the US. And if you don't have the patience to track your spending into detailed categories, this may be for you. In order for you to use this method effectively, you have to understand the difference between a need and a want. A need is an expense that you actually have to pay, and that you genuinely require for survival. No ladies, I'm not talking about that brand new handbag that you just have to have. Same goes for you guys, this doesn't include the brand new Java for the golf rig. However, if you do have debt, the minimum repayments amount would be classified as a need. Once are those things that bring us joy such as going out to a nice restaurant, getting a takeaway, or even DSTV. Lifestyle choices seem to be the ones that we really struggle with. For example, say you grew up poor, you may feel peer pressure to validate your economic status by driving a fancy car, living in a fancy house, and wearing fancy clothes. But you need to shun consumerism and embrace the responsible kind of living that will help you achieve financial success. Now that we have a greater understanding of what a need is and what a want is, we are going to categorize these expenses into these two categories. First though, we need to calculate our after-tax income. This is our income subtracted by all of our tax responsibilities. Then, we can allocate 50% towards our needs. It's important that we allocate this 50% first. Second, I hope you haven't forgot about that 20% that is going towards savings, investing, and paying off debt. And finally, we can allocate 30% towards our wants. Esther Orsher, Head of Money Management at F&B, says, the 50-30-20 rule may not be appropriate in South Africa. Town Bank's research shows that 55% of lower income earners in South Africa are broke just three days after they are paid, indicating that their debt repayment and living expenses are much higher than the rule suggests they should be. Although it is the 50-30-20 principle, it is not the law, and you should use it as a rule of thumb and as a guideline. If you feel like you should allocate more money towards your needs, that's okay. You should adjust as you need to in order to get the best results possible. So give it a try for a month and adjust taking into account your personal circumstances. You've got mail. Ah, 
the envelope method. Ha ha. The first step in this method involves establishing spending categories and setting a limit to each category. For example, say I wanted to go food shopping. My category name could be groceries and I could allocate 800 Rand towards this category. Here's where the envelope comes into the mix. You're going to need an envelope for each category and you're going to write down the limit on top of that envelope. For example, groceries 800 Rand. Boom, there you go. That easy. When you receive your funds for the month, you're going to need to draw the money and allocate your cash into each envelope. Now you need to take your time with this step and make sure that you count your money correctly. You're going to then only spend money using your envelope. So say I'm going grocery shopping. I take my envelope with me and I'm going to pay the bill using this envelope. The pros of this method are that it's going to keep you on track and it forces you to be disciplined and organized, creates accountability and it makes sure that you do not overspend. It also solves the whole swipe swipe oh no scenario. However, I'm a little bit skeptical about this method and it's probably my least favorite as it involves carrying around large amounts of cash and in a country like South Africa that can be a big risk. It also doesn't allow me to take advantage of credit card rewards. And at times, I can tend to be a little bit forgetful, which might result in me actually losing one of these envelopes or misplacing it indefinitely, which would not be a good thing. Last but not least, zero-based budgeting. With this system, you'll make a new budget each month and you don't automatically carry over last month's budget. Now this allows us to create new spending categories for both our income and our expenses if we need to. And it also allows us to track our spending habits and see if we are hitting that budget or if we may need to tighten up. Therefore, you find a use for every rand you receive in income and should have zero rand left over at the end of the month. Giving every rand a job eliminates the stress and the worry about where your money is going and how much money you should be spending or saving. There is absolutely no uncertainty with this budget. Let's take a quick look into this zero-based budget. As you can see here, I have a basic example of a zero-based budget. You're going to need to make a list of all of your income items and you need to make a list of all of your expenses. There we go, all my expenses. You can see over here, I've totaled all of my income and totaled all of my expenses up. Next, you're going to need to subtract your expenses from your income. I have a cash balance, which shows the difference between my income and my expenses. This is going to indicate to you whether or not you've allocated every rand a job. As you can see here, I have 200 rand available cash. This means I haven't allocated every rand a job. So I'm going to go and reallocate the 200 rand towards savings. Now we can see our cash balance equals zero. We have successfully given every rand a job, whether that is housing, savings, or food, we now know our money is being accounted for. Now I know this method can be time consuming, but personally, I like the fact that it gives you an in-depth look at your money and allows you to take control of your money effectively. All of these methods have been tried and tested and are globally known for aiding people to achieve financial success. I think it's important that you pick the one that best suits your circumstances and personalize it to bring yourself the best results possible. 
So which budget do you reckon will work best for you? Let me know down in the comment section below. Also, if you are new here, consider subscribing and ensuring that you are one step closer to achieving your financial goals.